<sighs> Glad to have the hat back. Hello and welcome back to the Baron's Game Room. I'm Aaron as always, and I want to finish up my little series of videos that's tips and advice for people who are considering making their own tabletop games. Now, this is the final video I'm planning for this series right now, so if you want to see all the rest of those, just, you know, go back to my page and check those out. But also, if you guys have any questions, please, please let me know. Seriously, I'll make a video to answer them because, as I say at the end of all these, I want to play your game. So for today's video, I want to compare and contrast the differences between deciding whether you want to self-publish a game or sell your idea to a publisher. Let's start with selling your idea. Now in my first video on all this, I said my advice for people who are selling their idea was to not worry about all the details of the game, like all the artwork and stuff like that. Because some people think whenever they're trying to sell an idea to a publisher, they think they need to show up with something like this. When in reality, you really just need something more like this. Really, it's going to be the publisher who puts all the work into making the art and all that for the game. Not really on you, the designer. So if you're selling your idea, then all you really need to do is worry about making a good, fun, smooth gaming experience. Uh, you might want to you know, figure out a theme or something if you want, but mostly just make a good enough presentation to be able to pitch your idea to the publisher. And that's really where your work ends if you're selling your idea. Make the game, make sure it's pretty good, make your presentation, done. Now, it can be a lot of hard work, you know, actually selling the idea. Usually you'll need to, you know, possibly go to, like, conventions, stuff like that, or through the internet, things like that. It's, there's a lot of ways to go about it. It's not a way I've personally looked at too much myself, because I decided to go the self-publishing route. Which, if you decide to do that, then, as a self-publisher, this is what you're trying to make. You're going to have to design the game, you're going to have to design the box, all the art and everything. Now, you don't have to necessarily do that all yourself, you can hire out, that's what we do. But yes, at the very end of it all, as self-publisher, you will be in charge of making the entire product. So right off the back, there's a lot more work that seems to go into self-publishing over selling to a publisher. <clears throat> but there are still more goods and bads between the two. Now, this is a very general statement. Obviously, if you end up making, like, the next Monopoly, you're going to be set for life regardless of which path you chose to go about this. Mega hits kind of break the normal rules. But generally, you have a higher potential of making uh, more money self-publishing than you do selling your idea. See, when you sell your idea, normally you'll get a check up front, and you might get some small bit of royalties as the game goes on. Usually, like, single-digit percentage of royalties. So if you want to make a living selling your game ideas to other publishers, then you'll probably need to pretty consistently be selling off more and more ideas, since each one's going to be a decent paycheck, but they're not going to be much in the long run. Now for self-publishing, there's really two levels to this. The first level you'll start out with is where the hobby or the career is more or less self-sustaining itself. Now, I say more or less, because the first game or two you put out is going to certainly have a big out-of-pocket cost for you. Uh, development and marketing more or less are going to come out of you yourself. And then from there, things like uh, Kickstarter, BackerKit, GameFound, all these crowdfunding websites are going to be what help you actually produce the game. You know, make it, ship it off, get it to your players and all that. And that will always be covered by your backers. As long as you, you know, budget correctly, their donations or pledges will end up be what funds that whole process. So that won't be out of your pocket. And if you're lucky, you'll end up getting enough extra from that that you can then cover your expenses or at least your gaming expenses until your next release. And that's how you'll start off, but hopefully you'll be lucky enough to make it to level two, where eventually that extra bit of money you're earning in each kind of Kickstarter or whatever isn't going to be just enough to cover your gaming expenses till your next release. It'll actually be enough to cover your expenses till your next release. So really, if pay is your deciding factor on it, both ways kind of have their ups and downs on it. Uh, you don't really have a level two on selling your ideas unless you become a really well-known designer and get hired on at some of the bigger publishers. You're probably going to be more or less just trying to pump a new one out as fast as you can to keep the paychecks rolling in. Whereas if you're self-publishing, how often you need to put them out really comes down to how successful your last one is. If you have a moderately successful one, an okay one, that at least funds itself, then you'll probably need to put a new one out fairly quickly if you want to try and get more income in. But if you end up ever having that lucky break and having a pretty decently successful one, then you have a little more wiggle room on how long you have to, you know, need to put out another one. So 
I wouldn't say either one of these money-wise has a good definite this one's better than the other. The last point I want to hit is the topic that personally persuaded me the most when I was trying to decide which way I wanted to go about this, and that is creative control. If you end up selling your idea to a publisher, you really don't have any creative control over the game. You've made the game, all that, you might have said this theme is what you're thinking for it, but once you sell that idea off to them, it is their property now. They will decide exactly what theme they want to put on, how everything's going to look and all that. Heck, they might even tweak your rules and all that stuff. So when you're selling ideas, understand that you're pretty much selling away all your creative control to the publisher you're giving it to, which is the exact opposite if you're self-publishing. Self-publishers, clearly, since you are the one doing all the work for it, you have full creative control over what happens with your game. You decide exactly what the art's going to look like, what the theme's going to look like, what the cards are going to look like, everything. That is your decision. You're the one who's putting all of your financial stuff on the line for it. So no one's really telling you what to do there, except for, you know, I guess feedback from people. But that's the big difference there for me. Personally, I wanted to have more control over my things. I wanted to decide what happened to them, <clears throat> the order I put them out, all that stuff. That was something that I much more preferred. And yeah, you know, I kind of like the idea of being my own company as well. But I think that kind of covers all that I have to say. So if you're selling your ideas to a publisher, it's usually easier work up front. There's less you need to actually complete with the game. And you do get that upfront check when you sell off your idea. However, long term royalties really aren't going to help you much. So you got to keep selling more and more ideas to maintain some sort of a steady paycheck, as well as you lose pretty much all creative control over your game ideas. Then on the self-publishing side, you get full creative control of your idea. No one really tells you what to do about it. And if your game ends up being a decent hit, that's just more money back to you. So it can be a little more money earned for each release. However, it's going to be more money out of your pocket to get to that point, as well as generally a lot more work since you have to make the entire package of the game. Hey guys, again, thanks so much for watching this. Um, if you have any questions, again, please let me know. Comments whatever i i want to answer your questions because as i keep saying i want to play your games seriously i really hope i get to play at least one awesome game because of this series here <clears throat> and again i'll do more but if you're tired of hearing me go on the advice don't worry next week i'll be back with my normal reviews and stuff so anyway guys see you next time